part of right effort is generating desire, i.e. generating desire to give rise to skillful qualities and to maintain them. If any unskillful qualities have arisen, you try to get rid of them. And when they haven't yet arisen, you make sure they don't arise again. You have to desire to do this. This doesn't happen on its own. This is the kind of desire that's a part of the path, that's a good part of the practice. What this translates into, of course, is that you've got to learn how to motivate yourself. Sometimes it's easy. You see this is good to do and you like doing it. It's going to be easy to do it. If it's something you don't like doing and you see that it leads to bad results, okay, you're not going to do it. The parts that are harder are the things that you like to do but are going to give rise to bad results, or the things you don't like to do are going to give rise to good results. You have to learn how to motivate yourself to abandon the first and to develop the second. That's why you can become a self-starter, because after all, it is your suffering that we're wor you're working on here. And you want to be able to motivate yourself and think far down the line. Another sign of wisdom, of course, is that you go for long-term happiness rather than short-term. So you're willing to put up with some difficulties in the meantime, and you're willing to learn how to make yourself willing and happy to do things ordinarily you wouldn't want to do. Sometimes you use heedfulness, and otherwise, in other words, you remind yourself of the bad things that come from unskillful qualities and the good things that come from skillful, and that you've got the choice right here, right now. If you fritter away your time, the time just gets eaten up, eaten up, and your opportunity to do skillful things just get less and less. So heedfulness is one way of motivating yourself. Sense of compassion is also a good way of motivating yourself. That When you practice, you benefit and the people around you benefit as well. If you want to dedicate the merit to somebody else, okay, they're going to benefit too. It's not just you here practicing. Remember, we're living here on the generosity of other people. We have to have some gratitude for them. And they're generous not because they want any specific monetary return, but they want to see that we're practicing. And so we dedicate the merit of our practice to them, and they benefit. You can also have a sense of pride. Here you are, a human being. You've got the opportunity to do something that human beings can do. Animals don't have the choice about developing skillful qualities or abandoning unskillful ones. But it's a choice that we have, so let's make the most of it. You can also use a sense of shame, realizing that okay, certain unskillful things are really beneath you. You've been well trained. You've got the Buddha as your teacher. You'd be ashamed to do things that the Buddha would, would criticize. These are all useful ways of motivating yourself. If you're speaking in terms of having a sense of self, this is a useful sense of self to have, because this is what keeps you on the path. So when you find your practice is flagging, do what you can to pick it back up again. What can you do to gladden the mind? What can you do to steady the mind? What can you do to keep your focus right where it belongs? Okay. When you're self-started like this, then you can go anywhere and you can practice. And you can rely on yourself. At the same time, you're actually putting one of the Buddha's main teachings in, into practice. It says it's the, one of the customs of the noble ones is to delight in doing what's skillful, to, to delight to in developing what's skillful, and to delight in abandoning what's unskillful. That puts you in line with the noble path. <laughs>